waiting to for general public comment, we'll move to the first item on the agenda. Um, my computer is acting up. It is, um, whoops, it's not, bear with me. I thought I had the agenda. It was the minutes that we're going to be voting on. Um, sorry, I thought I was all organized. Uh, Carolyn, would that be a, a uh, hmm. what, what do you need? Uh, I'm just looking for the agenda, which oh, sorry. I had and lost. Yeah. It's okay. I, um, I can I put that it. on screen share if you want. Um, uh, here. I've got it. I found it. Thank I got you. it. Okay. Um, yes. So the first item scheduled for 530 is a an application for a special permit for a backyard ADU auxiliary dwelling unit for a detached accessory dwelling or maybe that's accessory dwelling unit at 236 Chesterfield Road Leeds map ID 15B-37. And do we have the applicant to uh, introduce yourself and just give us we, we have the paperwork your application but so just a brief explanation of what you're asking for and what you're proposing to do, please. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. My name is Chris Lee and I am head of design and development at Backyard ADUs. We're representing the homeowners, uh, helping them plan a, um, a backyard home or a accessory, a detached accessory apartment um, for their mother to live in. Um, we're proposing to build a 660 square foot uh, fully wheelchair accessible a house uh, just off of the right of the existing garage um, and we're doing it within we're, we're doing it under the rules for uh, URA the URA zoning district as recommended by Carolyn Mishk as the the project will be in there in in that district as it's a split lot um, would you like me to go through and, and walk through the uh, the PDF of the plans page by page or stitch just stick with a verbal high level? Um, maybe, uh, maybe very briefly walk through the plans part in part for the benefit of uh, people who might be joining in. I think we have a couple of pe people who joined the, the meeting and, um, and I don't know if, if it's possible to, to coordinate with Carolyn to show on our screen mm -hmm. what you're referring to. Yeah, I just need to, Carolyn, could you um, enable screen sharing for the participants? I just sent it to you for you to be able to screen share. I've, I've got it. Excellent. Okay. All right. I think everybody can see the, see my screen. Um, so I'll just, I'll just walk through this briefly. I'll take probably um, five minutes and, and turn it over to questions. Okay. Um, so we're, we're at 236 Chesterfield Road. Uh, we're planning on uh, building the detached accessory apartment right off the existing garage and right next to the um, existing driveway. And as we can see, uh, this lot is a split zone. Um, we're partly in uh, rural residential and URA. Um, and per the guidance of Carolyn, we, we're putting this forth with requesting a special permit because a special permit is required um, in the URA district for detached accessory apartments. So we are, give you a quick overview of the site plan. Uh, so there's an existing driveway now that comes up a slight hill opening up to a large parking spot, uh, which parking area, which satisfies Northampton's parking requirements. <coughs> and we are looking to build this new detached accessory apartment as close to the existing infrastructure as possible in order to just minimize adding new impervious surface and, um, and, and keep the expense to the homeowner to a minimum. Um, also on here, we're showing how we're going to be accessing utilities. Uh, we'll be accessing electric by creating a, a sub meter off of the garage. Um, sewer is going to be connecting through the existing sewer connection to public the public sewer system, and we're going to be connecting to the existing well um, 
the existing well connection, we're not going to have to redrill a well or or expand the amount of water needed that pulled out of that today. Um, this is going to be uh, wheelchair accessible, um, and we're doing that with uh, we're we're going to be doing that with some ramps and trying to minimize the level of the house above grade. And then the other the other piece of note here is there are some significant trees. Um, not not too near the, the building site, but within an area where we were worried about them. And we did bring in Bartlett tree experts to review the trees and they provided a letter <laughs> meaning which trees are, are in the area and also gave us a recommendation of putting in uh, the tree protection fencing. So we'll be putting in this, um, we'll be putting in high visibility fencing during construction to make sure that we're not treading on uh, the root areas and these trees are well outside of any, any risk of being hit by machinery or or excessive uh, pedestrian traffic. Other component of this plan, we uh, the build site is on a is on a slight slope, and in order to make this more wheelchair accessible, we are going to be doing a little bit of regrading, uh, and we're going to be basically down a section of the hill and making it level with the existing driveway and parking. That way we don't have to have uh, people coming in on a slope and have excessively long wheelchair ramps to get in here. Uh, and we did evaluate other options that, that would avoid doing this, but after digging into the details, we did feel that this was the best way uh, to create this, to create this space. Um, and we do not, and also in doing this, we're not impacting these significant trees which are out around the, the perimeter. In terms of what we're building, um, these are these are elevations of what we're, we're aiming for. Um, we're, we're taking a, a cottage style with a 7 over 12 pitch roof, um, very typical New England styling where we'll be doing a vinyl clapboard. I think that the homeowners are going to go with a green and we've got this nice uh, double gable which is gonna look nice as they come in the driveway. But one, one point of note, um, this is not visible from any of the abutters as far as we know. Um, the nearest abutter is separated by a big patch of trees and is, and is above um, probably 10 or 15 feet above grade from, uh, from where we're gonna be building. Uh, and then floor plan wise, uh, we're gonna be building about 660 square feet and as you can see, we've got features in here that make it wheelchair accessible. Uh, we are thinking about that in the floor plan itself and doing a, a studio layout, which is satisfying the needs of the, the future occupant. Um, and I think that covers my brief overview of the plan. And I would open it up to questions from the board. Okay, any, uh, any uh, questions from uh, Bob or Sarah? Are we muted or are we not ask? Do we not have questions? I don't have any questions, David. Okay, Sarah. I have I have no questions. Wow. Okay, and uh, Carolyn, any comments from either DPW or any other city agencies, or any communication to your office from uh, Butters, Carolyn? Um, none of the above. I mean, DPW just submitted um, uh, basically a statement that they don't have any concerns about the issue, about the Great. project. Yeah. Good. And uh, do we know if there's anyone standing by watching this meeting who may want to address this? Is They could either raise their hand or hit star nine, or is there no one out there, Carolyn? Um, I don't see any hands raised okay. or... Okay. Um, Yes, electronically okay. indicated. Okay. Is, is that the applicant's family there? Um, I think it is. <laughs> yes. Okay. Greetings, folks. <laughs> um, I personally think this, I'm, we're like looking at the future here. I, I just think these ADUs are, uh, are such a positive development personally, uh, especially in a setting like this where it doesn't seem like it would interfere with anybody else's um, interests. Um, 
and I know it's consistent with uh, some of the city's uh, planning uh, principles. Um, I guess the question for the board is, uh, are we prepared to have a motion to close the public hearing, which would cut off the opportunity for um, further discussion? Before we do that, I, I did wanna ask about the trees. Um, so that, that fencing, um, is temporary fencing during construction, I take it, to protect the significant trees. Um, what about, um, how can we be assured that after construction, the trees will be um, safe and protected and remain healthy? Um, so the, in, in talking to Bartlett tree experts, they generally say if we are, they've got different, different uh, distances from the base of the tree that gauge risk. I think five feet, they say it's going to die almost certainly. 10 feet, you need to do root pruning. 15 feet, you've got much less worry. And then beyond that, you're, you're not really impacting the tree. And we're, we're, we're well without outside of that range. So the construction work itself shouldn't impact these trees. And then in terms of long-term protection, uh, the person, Libby, who will be living in here, um, has been pushing back on every tree that's had to be, be cut down. So I think she's going to do her best to protect them and make sure that they're not impacted at any point. And we do hug each tree before it's cut down. Yes, we do. <laughs> and I, if, if I could just interject, you are all helping me live with my family again and be with my grandkids in this time that otherwise I really don't know when I'd ever be able to see my family again. So without choking yeah. up, I thank yeah. you all so very sure. much. Sure. Well, I think that's one of the best things about ADU is to create this kind of an opportunity to, to bring family together and to take care of each other. Um, Agreed. So, I do have one thing I'm, I'm curious about. Um, Mr. Lee talked about the, uh, the line the URA zone line across the site, um, was it um, really that uh, important to get it into the yellow zone? Does it, um, is there a, a big difference in their um, permitting? Or I guess I'll ask Mr. Lee, uh, had you looked at connecting it and having it not be detached uh, for ease of utilities or whatever? Um, so we, we, we had hoped to do this as rural residential because we would have avoided the special permit process and we would have been able to break ground last month. Um, but we were advised to, to stick with what, where it's actually in. Mm -hmm. um, and in terms of the detached versus attached question, um, in, at least in this scenario, attaching it wouldn't have made a big difference on utilities because we would have been attaching it to a garage that had a cement slab floor. And yeah. we would have ended up excavating anyway in order to get the utilities to the basement. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing about detached from what we've seen, if you don't touch the existing structure, it just gets a lot easier because you're not worrying about simple things like is the wall you're attaching to plumb? Mm -hmm. And and, and you have a little bit more leeway in meeting the architectural guidelines of the house, like meet, matching roof lines, and matching existing siding. We can make something that's cohesive with the property without needing to spend quite as much time digging into the existing structure and understanding what's there. Very good, thank you. And would it be, a, I assume it would not be a problem getting a statement from an arborist that, uh, the tree protection measures have been installed um, at that point in time. Um, just, I don't, just so we have something coming back to the city for the city's file to verify that. Yeah, I think I think we can do that. I'm not sure the exact process on on how we do that, but um, in addition to the the arborist letter, we can certainly send some photos showing the the fencing that's in there. Carolyn, can, are you able to comment on that? Would that be sufficient, a letter with photos from the arborist confirming that the tree yeah. protection measures were installed? Yes, I mean, that's pretty, that's becoming pretty typical in a permit condition is to um, require that, you know, as part of the submission of the building permit, 
that um, that is um, accompanied by a letter stating that the tree protection measures as recommended by the arborist have been in, in, installed. Um, so that, um, that definitely works from the city's perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna suggest when we move on the, if no one else does, when we move on the uh, application uh, that we include that as a condition. And it sounds like Mr. Lee that shouldn't be a problem because you're going to be doing it anyway. Yep, not, not a problem to send okay, some photos. Good. good. Um, any other questions or comments from the board before, or should we have a motion to uh, close the public hearing and then we'll, people are invited to stay with us while we, it just means we cannot uh, hear any more comment or input from the public or the applicant, but we'll immediately go to a motion just uh, on the application itself. And as a reminder to the board, uh, as was just referenced, I think, um, this is, um, or maybe it isn't, am I in the right application? Um, this is the one that's also going, yeah, to the planning board because the special permit is required. Or am no, I that was the other I'm one. Mixing, yeah. I'm this one is apples, done sorry. after your review. Yeah. Got it. Okay, I just wanted to be clear about that. So there's no further yeah. review by any other boards once we approve it. So the board should be aware of that. Right. Um, yeah, so a motion, uh, motion to close the public hearing. So moved. All right. I second. And all in favor, I think we have to take a roll call because it's a virtual meeting. Yep. So Carolyn, if you could read the roll. Uh, Sarah Northrup. Aye. How do you vote? Uh, okay, Bob Riddle. Aye. Aye. And David Bloomberg. Yes, so that, uh, so the, the public That's hearing unanimous. is closed. That's unanimous. And now, uh, do we have a motion on the uh, application for a special permit? I'll make a motion. I'll make a motion that we uh, approve the special permit uh, for backyard ADU for detached accessory dwelling at 236 Chesterfield Road Leeds, uh, map ID 15B-37 with the condition that uh, care be taken to um, provide tree armor and that for any trees that are endangered. And maybe the specific suggestion is to clarify that last point to require a, a written statement submitted to Carolyn, to the uh, Office of Planning and Sustainability by a certified arborist that the tree protection measures have been installed on the site in accordance with the recommendations of the arborist. Is that Agreed. I think Agreed. What we're saying. Okay, so that, that would be the, the, full, the condi full condition. Um, second. And the sec second. I'm sorry, second. second. Uh, that was, I think, Sarah seconding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then um, uh, for we'll the, the roll vote, call. I guess, we'll do the roll call, please. Uh, Bob Riddle? Uh, uh, yes. I agree. Sarah Northup? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, that's unanimous. Congratulations. <laughs> I think this is a wonderful. Yay, proposal. family. Yes, Thank all you. the best. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's see. Uh, we're, it's past five, uh, 545, so I think we can move to the next item on the agenda. So be before we leave, I just wanted to thank from the whole family. This was a perfect present for the first night of Hanukkah. Oh, good. Oh, um, happy Hanukkah. <laughs> <laughs> so thank you it's all. A, and thank you, Chris, thank you so much. much. Thank, thank you all so much. Yeah. Be it's safe. It's awesome. Thank you. It's, it's awesome. It's a, and I can't believe I am living in an area where this whole conversation was about the safety of the trees. <laughs> I love you all so much. <laughs> well, there was nothing else to, to worry about in this application. But no, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's important. It's a miracle of Hanukkah. May it last more than eight days. Oh, thank you so <laughs> much. Thank you so much. Okay, take care. Good take care. Job, Mr. Lee. Uh, yes, thank you. Uh, so let's see, the item at 545 is an uh, application for a special permit by Miles Powers for a home business with storage and one employee at 218 Drury Lane in Florence, map ID 48-17. Um, is uh, Mr. Powers or his representative here to present a brief description of the application? I think so. Let's see. Carol, 
when I have my hand up. <laughs> uh, we need to have the presentation by the applicant. Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to put the screen share up um, for the project. Um, and I don't know if the, um, I see that Miles Powers is on the um, Zoom. So I don't know if you'd want to um, just uh, briefly describe your project. Uh, yes, I'm here. Um, my, Miles Powers and I live at 218 Drury Lane and I'm looking to have to run a landscaping business out of my home. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's that's what my intentions are. And I have one employee and we would be leaving at seven o'clock in the morning and then we'd be gone for the day and then coming back to my house at around 4.30 in the afternoon. Okay, and um, and this primarily, as I understand your application, is to have uh, a place to store equipment that I assume you'll be taking out in the morning and offsite and returning in yes. the end of the day and putting it in. Is it a shed or a structure? Yes, it's and a shed. shed. Okay. Yep, okay. it's a shed, and I'd be just uh, I use lawnmowers and weed whackers and leaf blowers and basically. I leave and then I come back at the end of the day. I, that's, there's no coming and going constantly during the day. And there would be no, other than the storage of the equipment and the removal and return each day, no other business would be happening on the property really at no. any time. It's really just no. a store uh, right. equipment. Okay. Right. And being able to leave my home to provide a service and then coming home and storing my equipment there. Right. And, um, and okay, any, before I continue, any other questions from board members be uh, before we get to public comment? No questions from me. I will look forward to hearing about the uh, driveway access options, but we can move forward for now. Yeah, well, why don't, that's what I wanted to ask about, oh, Sarah, okay. um, is, um, you're showing sort of a drawing to indicate that there would be basically a second driveway. Yes, uh, there, to there, access. Is a sec there is a second driveway. It's a uh, stone and gravel that leads up to the uh, shed. It's already there. It's existing. Yes. So I just want to comment that DPW also made a rough comment about that in their comments that um, there has been no permit issued for a second driveway. I think I didn't have a chance to drive there myself, but certainly from Google Earth, it's not a formal driveway that's overgrown um, from, you know, just two years ago. So um, they strongly... Um, Could you repeat that? Carolyn, it's not a formal driveway? Uh, not that I'm aware of, and DPW certainly isn't aware of. Thank you. Um, so it is an issue in terms of um, making sure that this is um, an accessory um, use to a single family home and not just a separate, considered a separate commercial use. Um, and the um, two driveways require a site plan approval from the planning board. Um, so none of that has been uh, approved or permitted previously. So that is, um, you know, an issue I think the board needs to um, evaluate um, uh, as part of this permit. So can you just clarify what it means to be a formal driveway versus, I guess you might call this an informal driveway. Did you say that to have two driveways, for example, two official, I'll call them official driveways, um, they, you, the city has to approve the second driveway? Correct. They have to and, approve any access onto a public way. And so there's no permit that DPW recognized it as a, right. as a second driveway that they had didn't, at least in their comments, said that this would be a new driveway. And is that what's referred to as a curb cut permit sometimes? Yes, 
Yeah. Okay. And that's issued by the planning board? DPW. Cur DPW issues a curb cut permit. Right. And so it doesn't matter if the driveway has informally been used no matter how long um, by the property owner. Um, Correct. And particularly your, this is a new, this is a special permit asking for a new use and accessory to a residential use. So in that context, the board um, certainly has the ability to require that all the appropriate permits are granted or that no second driveway is created for the purposes of having um, an accessory home business. Okay, and um, so that kind of begs, it, it sounds to me like the, what that analysis leads to is that either, uh, or this is just my take on it, we would, we, we could or should only approve the request if it's subject to the condition that that storage structure would need to be accessed from the street by way of the existing driveway to the house, instead of the, the, the second informal driveway for which there's no curb cut permit. Correct. Or so I guess my question for the applicant is, is that feasible <clears throat> from your standpoint to, yes, to use? Absolutely, but the only reason I did the uh, stone and gravel and, and sand is because there was a a uh, piece of blacktop that was probably eight feet wide that went in in the, that area where I added to the driveway. It was yeah. it was already blacktop there that went in probably eight feet up <laughs> from from the road. Right, but it sounds like it wouldn't be a, a huge problem if no, we it, felt it, constrained to say you need right. to access uh, the. From, um, from my existing from driveway. your existing official driveway the one that goes yep. to your house Ab okay that's not. very nope. helpful because um, that frankly gets us off the hook because otherwise we, we have a problem based on what right. what right. Carolyn is saying yep. um, before we ask for public comment any other questions from the board um, I wonder if um, we can look at a couple more uh, on the screen share uh, a couple more of the images, the next one down. Thanks, Carolyn. And then I'm realizing that uh, perhaps our condition would be about it being a permitted, it must be accessed from a permitted driveway. And then if he gets the other one permitted, you don't have to come back to us to say, yeah, you can use one you have a permit for. Or maybe yeah. I think I mean? my, my concern is, um, Maybe we could be more specific and say, you know, our, our approval is is over the existing lawful driveway, I'll call it. Mm. Um, but I mean, it's a little hard to project into the future. I guess that's my my concern. Right. But that's why I was just going to leave it as uh, it must be accessed by a permitted driveway. But um, I'm seeing now with this next picture that's up on screen share that it's not a big reach to get over there it's not like he's got to cut through the woods to get there no no absolutely not no yeah i'm not sure i want to complicate things in my opinion but i don't know carolyn if you have any reaction to that because i don't want to create sort of uncertainty for for your office yeah i mean i i guess i would argue and i mentioned in my staff report that you know you have, um, you're reviewing an accessory use to the single family house and accessory home businesses are really about being invisible. Um, and to the extent that additional driveways are created with separate, you know, access going and coming, I think it takes away, it detracts from that concept of having an accessory to a single family home. Um, and so I think that, so I think the board should think about a permit condition in that context, as opposed to mm -hmm. saying it's either or, um, yeah, I, I, that's how I feel. I think that, you know, if in the future, the applicant wants to pursue the idea of the second driveway, 
for one thing that would trigger planning board review mm -hmm. and that would be his prerogative at that point in time mm. does that make sense and versus mm -hmm. us trying to sort of project into the future and grant rights based on circumstances that don't exist right now namely a curb cut because i think the planning board would have to get into that well i guess they would anyway maybe but right. does that make sense sure um so if there are no other board questions we can always continue in a minute um are there i understand there may be uh members of the public who might want to comment or address the board yeah on this council application? labarge has her hand up okay thank you carolyn uh, <laughs> city councilor marianne labarge i've been on those premises and i know the people the girl who own that house for 21 years. And I have to agree with what I'm hearing from um, Carolyn Mish that I think we need to look at the accessing into that driveway to the left where the shed is. Because I can recall about pavement up there. I have a problem with that. I remember all this, but I don't remember the pavement, plus the fact that house was not lived into for quite a long time because the owner of that house lived with her mother off of um, Lowville Road because the mother was in her 90s. So there was probably a lot of overgrowth on that because I'm hearing Miles say that there was some black um, tar on that bottom. I don't recall that. But I like the direction that Carolyn Mish is going into. And I think that would solve a lot of problems. But I just want to give a little history about Miles. You know, as you know, I am a city councilor and I'm here this afternoon to talk about the special permit for a home business submitted by Miles Powers living at 218 Drury Lane in Florence. I want to talk about Miles Powers submitting this special permit for a home business. Miles worked for his father for many years. His father, Gary Powers, resided on Florence Road. And as his city councilor told me he would like to open up a home business of lawn care, mulch, leaf removal, sanding, and snow plowing. And that is what has happened here. I do have the son now who wants to open up a home business of the landscaping and so forth. Gary's Miles' father, him and I, and Gary's wife, Annie, went door to door and let the <coughs> residents know exactly what Gary wanted to do with opening up his home business. We went to all the houses, and that's critical with me as a city councilor, of showing that visibility of that person applying for a permit of what they're going to do. And it makes life easier for zoning. It makes life easier for planning. And I found that out for 21 years. So anyways, we even hit on Pertsford Road, Platinum Circle and Diamond Court. We sent to the petition to the planning office a week before the meeting with the many residents who were in full support of Gary's father opening up the business. We had nobody disagreeing. Mr. Gary Powers passed away in 2018. The business was left to the responsibility of Gary's widow, Anna Powers who owns that property on Florence Road, not Gary. Annie and I had a lengthy talk of how much time she had to spend reorganizing that business, which she really didn't have her hands into it, but she handled like the mailing and so forth like that. She was left with a lot of responsibility. So anyways, after about two years, she decided she no longer wanted to keep the business and she decided to give that business to Miles Powers. She no longer wanted the business on her property, which she owned herself. Miles and I talked in regards of him opening up a business on 218 Jewelry Lane. I proceeded to let him know about what his father did with the petition and so forth and what would be expected of him. I also told him he would need a special permit for a home business. I told Miles to get in touch with the building inspector at that time, Louis Hasbrook, and then Jonathan Flagg. That didn't occur until about two months later. 
Miles did fill out an application after the building inspectors talked with him about what he wanted to do during the application process. He also applied for a permit to build a garage and building, which he did do, and it has been completed. And I went over by site and I did look at that. I just want the zoning board to hear something that I feel is very valuable here, very valuable. It was bad enough in 2018 that Miles lost his dad. About two months later, he lost his wife Beth at a very young age to cancer. Miles was left with the responsibility of bringing up his four little girls, making sure they have a good quality of life. The ages of his little girls are one daughter at seven years old, a set of twin daughters at five years old, and one daughter <laughs> at three years old. Miles is very fortunate, believe me, to have a family that has been helping him to be able to continue on to work and support his beautiful family. As a city councilor, I told Miles with the process of the application that hours of business was critical. Even though it is a residential area way before Clear Falls, it used to be pretty noisy out there in that, but it's very, very quiet. And I know many residents on Lowville Road right down the line. Anyways, I also told him about how much um, equipment would be placed on the premises and if that equipment would be used on his site. Also, how many employees would he have and how many at his location at any one time. So anyways, I just feel that a big concern that I have is the storage of flammable liquids, including gasoline at that location or any location that's filing for a special permit like his dad did, which he had to have a special area of the gasoline for his lawnmowers and everything. And the fire department came yearly to check out that premises. Anyways, Miles replied back to me that he does not use gasoline on his premises. He goes to a gas station early in the morning to fill up his lawnmowers. Will Miles be mulching? That is another concern. Will he be buying the mulch or creating the mulch? He will be doing leaf removal and grass removal. Will there be cutting of any bushes? Where would the grass, the leaves, and the bushes to be, be disposed of? When you apply for a special permit for a home business, you need to follow the regulations, which prevents a city council getting complaints from abutters in the neighborhood. And I do know that. I've been working with the building inspector throughout the summer up to the latter part of the fall this year of someone attempting to run a home business with no special permit. That finally has come to an end with the residents being extremely helpful taking pictures, the building inspector sending two letters of stop and desist. I am supporting Miles Powers of hoping that the zoning board will give him that opportunity to be able to get approval of a special permit of a home business. And hearing what Carolyn Mish has brought forth, I definitely would like that included on there if this does go for approval. And I knowing Miles, I have a lot of respect for him and his little children, that he will follow the regulations without affecting any of the neighbors, the abutters or the neighborhood. Sincerely, and I thank you. Thank you, Councilor Labarge. That was very helpful. And to have that background is also really uh, meaningful. Um, so I think we're all on the same page um, mm -hmm. in terms of, uh, but why don't, we, uh, why don't we make a decision here? Are we ready? Uh, if there's no one else here who might want to speak other, uh, other than board members, I guess we can move to close the public hearing. And then right after that, we'll vote on the application. So just motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion we close the public hearing. Okay. Second. Okay, okay. and uh, roll call, please. Uh, Sarah Norther? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes. Okay. Uh, so now, now I think we're ready for a motion on the application. 
why don't you make it, Sarah? You had some concerns. All right. Um, uh, let's see. <clears throat> I move that we approve <clears throat> special permit for home-based business with one employee uh, as presented under the condition that the business uses the existing permitted driveway um, so that it, the business is an accessory use to the residents. Um, mm, any other any other such concerns? I, I also concerned about management of hazardous liquids, and there's I think there's plenty of laws and rules about that. So I, I won't condition it there myself. Yeah, I, I think I agree with Councillor Labarge that that the uh, that's governed uh, by other rules and regulations that are ably enforced by the building inspector and other departments. Um, so second on the motion. I'll, I'll second the motion. Okay. And I, uh, I guess we're ready for a roll call vote, please. Uh, Bob Riddle? Um, yes. Sarah Norther? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Yes, absolutely. So it's unanimous. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Look, Mr. Well, Powers. I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. Good luck. You're welcome. Thank you. Forward to thank seeing you. your trucks out there. <laughs> <laughs> Walking the streets. Trailers. <laughs> 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 more machine. Well, and I like thank it. you. Thank you, Councillor Labarge, for the, uh, the background that was so helpful and so much appreciated. Thank you all. Okay. Um, I think we have one set of minutes we could vote on before we vote to adjourn. Um, yes, from November 12th. Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Fine. If there are no problems with them, if there are no problems with anyone else, I'll just move to accept the minutes of November 12th. Second. Okay, and a, a roll call vote, please. Uh, Sarah Northup? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. And David Bloomberg? Uh, just looking at the one last time. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, that's so that's unanimous. unanimous. Thanks. And yep. then do, before we adjourn, are, do we need to mark our calendars? Do we know anything about upcoming meetings yet? Um, there is a special permit um, that will be scheduled for January 14th. That's going to be the next hearing date. Okay. So I haven't fi finalized that yet because, you know, we skip over the end of the year. Right. So uh, ZBA, I'm just 14. Yep. And 530. Okay. And then I guess if that's the only other business, we could uh, have a motion to uh, adjourn. I make a motion we adjourn. Second. Okay, and roll call. Uh, Sarah Norther? Yes. Bob Riddle? Yes. David Bloomberg? Yes, that's unanimous. Thank you.